This is a vegan, gluten-free vegetable pakora. I know, it's amazing. If you're new to my channel, subscribe, click the link, click the button, click the bell, click whatever you want to click, and new recipes come into your in inbox, which I absolutely adore when I find some on YouTube and they send me stuff. I love that, it's amazing. Um, you're gonna love these. I'm gonna show you how to make them. They're simple. It's fried food, yes, okay, no problem. Once in a while is okay. This is delicious. I can't wait to eat them. Um, here we go. Um, pakoras are like my, oh man, I made pakoras in my restaurant. Um, it's called Three Wells with Jason and Maddie, who we were all partners uh, years ago in Australia. And pakoras was on the menu and I love them. And they're a cheeky kind of a, a situation. They're a little cheeky snack. Gungun, Gungun's behind the camera. Hello. Hello. Um, they're like a deep fried vegetable glory. And it, you don't have them all the time. So don't freak out on the oil, everyone. I'm using rice bran oil today. You can use coconut oil. And no, you can't bake them because they taste like shit. So don't do that. This is just like a moment, okay? I don't like the judgment around food. This is whole food in its whole form. And we're kind of making it into this gorgeousness and we're frying it and I'm celebrating because who doesn't like a little bit of fried food now and then, right? Because I know I do. So check out these ingredients. Um, I've got some coriander here. I've got some spinach, pumpkin and tomato. That's the fresh ingredients, right? And then I'm gonna show you some spices in a minute, but I'll, I'll get this underway. Food processor, grate a blade on your food processor. Make sure that's on. Beautiful, and I just want to grate this greatness. Okay, let's take this off there. Put that over there. Seems easy so far. You're gonna love this. This is like the bomb. Okay, let me get a bowl. Like I said, like when I had my restaurant, I had these and I just used to love them. They're amazing and they're gluten free and they're vegan and they're all the things, but they just taste damn good. That's the, that's the most important thing. Spinach, spinach leaves, say baby spinach, English spinach. Silver beet and kale kind of don't work. It's kind of really strong, but if you want to do that, you can go ahead and do it. It's going to change the flavor though. You know, just remember that. This is, this is what I use and it works. So. Baby spinach definitely works. Okay, spinach, pumpkin, and I just want to run my knife through like that. That's kind of it, right? Coriander leaves, it's probably a bit too much pumpkin there, but I'll use it in something else. Um, tomato, now watch this, Gun Gun, how I'm going to do this. You want the cheeks of the tomato, and this is how our chefs Chica tomato, we call it. <laughs> we don't want the pulp or the seeds, we just want the outer parts. So you get it like this. This is one of the things I teach in my classes too. Like if, you're, if you really want to take your cooking to the next level and learn about plant-based cooking and just hang out with me in the kitchen, my online cooking classes take you through this amazing step-by-step -step process. And you're just with me and we're together any time of the day, any device, anywhere in the world. Um, and you just log on and pick what you want to make and blah, blah, blah. So this is how you cheek a tomato. So see my knife is flat, Gigi? And I'm just going to run that. And I'm just going to take that out. Now I can use that in something else, keep it for tomato sauce, whatever. This is called cheeking a tomato. Good job, Blas. And then what you're going to do with that, I'm just going to set that aside, is you're going to julienne it. So julienne means long strips, so have a look at this. Nice long strips. I definitely want some chilli in there, so... You don't like it too hot, do you? No. You don't like hot food, do you? Uh, it does something to your tummy, right? So if you don't like hot food either, just keep it out. I'm just going to put a little bit in. Is, is, is that going to be all right for you, Gungun? <laughs> you've had spicy food before with me, and you've just gone, Whoa. 
<laughs> Too much. Gives you tummy. Yeah. Yeah, totally. Okay, so we need beeson flour. Beeson flour is chickpea flour. So chickpeas grounded down into a flour. It's lovely, it's earthy, it's delicious. There's something about it, it's yummy, um, it's amazing, you'll love it. I have it on my shelf, I find it spectacular. So you want to add your basin in there. This is me measuring by the way. Follow the recipe everybody. I kind of know that's kind of one and a half cups. <laughs> You're going to need a whisk and you're going to need water. So we're going to need spices to go with this. Now, Nigeria seeds is one of the spices and they're amazing. They're actually beautiful. It's a, in a lot of Indian cuisine, black sesame or Nigeria it's called. Really interesting. Um, they look like black sesame seeds, but they're not. So have a really good close up of this, Gungun. That's a Nigeria seed. And this is a black sesame. See the difference? Yeah. So we're after a Nigeria seed. So we need that. And like I said, with my spice rack, I don't know where anything is. And this is what happens. You kind of get a little bit of anxiety. But it wakens you up. But it makes you actually, you know, be really present. Because if this all had labels on it, I'd just be like grabbing something because I know what it is. It really does wake you up. It brings you really present. Cumin seeds, fantastic. Nigeria seeds, fantastic. I need curry powder. Now I have all different types of curry powder on here. But I don't know what's what. But, oh, that's a nice, that's a nice curry powder. And once you get to know food, what am I looking for? I'm looking for sweetness in a curry powder. Just trying to see if I've got any other curry powder. This is my world. This is what it's like. It's kind of like winging it every day. Oh, it's definitely this one. No, it's just this one and these ones. Yeah, okay, back over this way. And I'm going to add, you're going to measure yours. I'm just going to wing it today. I'm going to add curry powder, some cumin seeds, some Nigeria seeds into there. And you're going to make a batter. Now, how much water? Don't know. You're going to have to wing this. You don't want a smooth, you don't want a soup, you want a thick batter. So just a little bit of water at a time. And beeson flour is quite lumpy too. So I look at this, Gungun. It's kind of very dry and breaking down the lumps. I'm adding a little bit more water at a time. It's manageable. Cooking is such a process. It's not just the recipe, you follow it. And you think, oh, that didn't work. That chef doesn't know what she's doing. It's not about that. The recipe's a guide. It's just, it's all intuition that's staying with it. I mean, look at old mate over here. She's just staying with it, cooking, cooking, cooking. So I'm adding a little bit more water. I want a really thick batter. I don't want, you know, a smooth, uh, sorry, a really runny batter. So just have a look in here, Gun Gun. Okay, so now I need to add salt, building blocks of flavor. And this is where I'm gonna taste to see where I'm at. Beeson flour is so earthy. It's hard to explain. This is what you're going to do. This is the coriander. Just chopped it up a little bit rough. This is the chilli. Tomatoes. Follow the recipe of the ingredients of how much to put in there. Don't do what I'm doing. I'm just winging it right now because I can. Okay. Um, I need a spoon. You're just going to fold this through like this. You're going to add the spinach leaves to it. You're probably thinking, why doesn't she cut the spinach leaves? Well, I like that flakery, battery deliciousness around the leaves. You're going to taste it right now. This is what I, I teach in my classes. So important. Think about where you're at. It does need more salt. This is how you make a pakora, my friends. It's that simple. So see what I'm doing, Gungun? I'm just pushing the mix in, just making sure it's well combined. I'm actually fiddling with it too much, but whatever. 
Okay. All right, so the next step is to fry it. Now, coconut oil or rice bran oil, whatever you've got, whatever you want to do, don't comment and tell me I'm using the wrong oil, please, because this is all I've got today. Okay, I'm, 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 I'm sick of people telling me <laughs> that I've got to use a certain oil. I'm in my home. This is my kitchen. This is what I have today. So what have you got today? I totally recommend coconut oil. I love the using rice bran oil. Um, it's a neutral oil. If you can afford macadamia nut oil, use macadamia nut oil. It's up to you. So my oil is hot. Now, how can you tell that your oil is hot? Wooden spoon, if it starts to bubble, come nice and close, Gungun, into here. Is it bubbling around it? Is it? Nope. No, it's not. So it's not hot enough, right? Yeah. So I'm going to let that heat up and I'm going to come back to you and I'm going to show you how to do that so you can see the bubbles around the spoon and then we know it's hot. And meanwhile, this is just sitting here. So I'm going to need paper towels um, to drain my glorious fried situation on. Got that ready. Um, what else do I need ready? I've got to make sure I've got some tongs ready if I need them. This is what you need to do at home. This is what us chefs do. We make sure everything's organised around us. I'm going to need something to, oh, I don't know, maybe something with a slotted spoon just in case I need to use a spoon and I, the tongs aren't working. So I've got that on tap. I've got my paper towel ready. I've got that ready. My oil's heating. It's time for a drink of water. <laughs> being really present being organised I'm not running from one side of the kitchen to the other and this is what I encourage you to do at home to really sink into the fact that cooking is just beautiful when you're feeling willing and troll kind of around or there's no kids around if there was this wouldn't be like this it would be like this because I run past it and knock it over okay back into here Gigi let's see if this is hot now is it bubbling around the spoon? Not yet. Not yet. Nearly. Nearly. Yeah. Yep. Nearly. So just wait another minute or so. This is when the diaphragmatic breathing starts to come in. <sighs> All the things you've got to do, the washing, the picking the kids up, or your husband's coming home, or you really don't like cooking, but this is kind of cool watching her cook, and you kind of got anxiety, and you want to order out, or you're picking on yourself, and you're thinking, oh, I'm fat, or I'm skinny, or I'm, I'm not good enough, or I'm not healthy, I need to change. This is when you just shut it down, sink back into your heart, know that you get to participate on the planet, know you get to have food, know you get to have a choice. Oh, a choice. Imagine that, when some people can't sink in the presence. This is one of the things I was taught in the health retreat, is to really sink down into my feet. I've got no shoes on and just kind of just sink how, into how grateful I am right now and all the trauma that we go through in the human story, right? It's just gone. It's gone for a minute. And I'm waiting for this oil to heat up. <laughs> and I'm breathing. Are you breathing, Gungun? Yeah. And so much is going on in the mind, right? Yeah. So much, right? Mm. I don't know how people meditate. This is kind of how I meditate. I, I bring it back in and I fail at this a lot because I'm so intense and full on. But I really do my best to bring it back. I really do. Are we hot yet? Oh, we're bubbling. Have a look, Gigi. Wooden spoon, no coating on the spoon. Yeah. Yep, it's ready. Okay. So now I'm going to get some of this mix. Now I'm not making a ball, I'm making it quite flat as you can see. Now watch this. Just be mindful. Very slowly, I'm not touching the bottom of the pan yet. I'm not touching the bottom of the pan, I'm kind of lifting it off. It's kind of dropped in there. Grab another one. Now this oil is hot, so be very, very careful. Very careful. Kind of touch the oil. Why am I doing that? Because I don't want to just dump it in there because it'll fall to the bottom and stick. Just slowly 
Okay. It can be as big as small as you want. I don't like them to have them round because it doesn't cook in the middle. Once again, back into the pan. Just hovering. Just release into there. I'm going to turn down my oil because I know it's quite hot. Just going to let that do its thing. It's like a fried glory. Just be mindful. So see what I'm doing, Gun Gun? Be really mindful. I'm just kind of picking them up, just kind of like this so they aren't sticking. My oil's good, I'm going to turn it up now a little bit again. See how I'm managing my heat? It's so important that you do this. You become one with the stove and you can kind of see when it starts to bubble too much then you turn it down. When it's not bubbling enough, you turn it up a little bit and you kind of got this flow happening with cooking because cooking is not about the recipe. It's about the intuitiveness. The recipe is a guide. It's you actually falling in love with the idea of the actual dance of cooking and this... Some people call it controlling, actually. I've been told I'm very controlling. I know, right? <laughs> and I am. But there's also a deep respect of what's going on in here. And that is a, a, a level of controlling. So, cooking really beautifully. So this one's kind of stuck. So this is what you do when they're stuck. You kind of just slowly, I've got a hold of my pan. And you're just kind of lifting it up. And there, it's come off beautifully. How do you know when they're ready? Well, you don't. This is where the intuitiveness comes in. You can, if you want to, come in nice and close. You can, if you want to, turn it over just to see how golden it is. And it's not really, is it? It's just a little bit of colour, so we want more colour. Okay, I'm going to turn them over. Look at the colour now. A little bit more colour, huh? Yeah. Yeah, that's cool. Oh, yeah, that's cool. Okay. Let them cook for another few minutes on each side. You want the colour to come out. So, I don't know when they're cooked, right? You probably don't know when they're cooked either, but it's all intuition. But what you can do is just have a look inside. You want them to be crunchy, and they are. You just want to make sure that they're, they're done, and they are, right? There's no... It's all battery and delicious. I want them to be a little bit more golden. That's how I check anyway, because how can you tell really at the end of the day? Just a little bit more colour. You know what I don't have here is that basket. They're good, they've got a good colour, a really good colour. It smells great in here, it smells like a little bit of India. Oh my goodness. All right. You want these to drain really, really well. Nice and crunchy. That's why I keep the um, spinach um, quite, quite large. See how it's those little leaves of crunchiness? I love that. I freaking love that. And see how I'm draining them, kind of just standing them up on the side so that all that oil kind of drains out as much as possible. Turn that off. I'm going to cook that rest later for us. But come over here. And um, this is a real moment, actually. I've got a chilli sauce. I have a beautiful tomato pineapple chutney. Have a look on, um, in all the videos in this situation of mine, like in the library here, and you'll see it. But this is a chilli sauce as well, so you can do either either. I want a little sprinkling of salt, just a little bit on there. And then, oh, crunchy and delicious. Oh, my gosh, they're hot, so be careful. That, to me, is cheeky. Cheeky food. My mouth's watering. There's something about fried food, right? <laughs> Just like, what is it? We all love hot chips and French fries and bags of chips every now and then. No judgment. Mm -mm. This is like a one-off, you know, every now and then it's just delicious. This is it. Beautiful vegetarian, actually vegan pakoras that are gluten-free. Let me know how you go. Please, please, please comment below. I'd love to hear. 
um, how you went with your oil and how you felt. Did you feel confident? Did you breathe? Did you stop all those amazing thoughts that keep coming in and contaminate your cooking moment? <laughs> I love you and I'll see you soon. Bye. I just want to eat it. I oh, actually, I'm going to eat it. Look how crunchy they are, Gungun.